Today in the crypto space, we see Bitcoin and Ethereum slightly below the critical levels. Bitcoin at $16,800 or so and Ethereum slightly below that $1,300 mark. The rest of the crypto space is pretty much pulling back in a good area to buy. Maybe this is a good buy the dip opportunity before we continue getting some positive momentum to the upside. However, guys, we should be prepared that we could get a big rejection and pull back to lower levels and perhaps down to to the bottom of the range once again in today's video i want to talk to you about the general market i also want to talk to you about one altcoin that is looking really good it's a really bullish altcoin and just recently has upgraded its ecosystem and that coin is elrond so you know what let's talk about the news let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize welcome to the channel my name is mike and let's get right into it guys welcome welcome if you're new to the channel special welcome on the channel we talk about bitcoin we talk about ethereum and we look at the general market throughout all the altcoins and we look for opportunities to capitalize whether we go up bullish or down bearish we need to have a plan and a strategy ready to go so that we can capitalize on any of that volatility and if you appreciate that strategy do yourself a favor guys and subscribe to the channel click that bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos guys i try to release a video anytime i see something interesting in the charts and today i do see something interesting elrond is looking pretty good maybe primed for a nice little pump especially such a bullish project it deserves our attention at the bottom of the range where we could be accumulating but before we get into elrond and the charts and so on let's look at the general market bitcoin right now did pull back fell below that critical line of support that we were talking about yesterday and currently struggling again once again perhaps looking for some support and that's what we need in the immediate short term regarding bitcoin we need to see bitcoin get some strength back into the market yes we could be getting interest rates increases and so on and so forth economy uh, news however at the end of the day we need to see bitcoin hold steady at these levels if we fall below and we start cascading down to the downside we could create low lower lows and of course guys the advice is be prepared be prepared regardless be prepared for bullish be prepared for bearish we need to have that plan ready to go guys and that's what we do here on the channel if you appreciate that slap the like button because you know as a new channel any engagement is greatly appreciated i'm trying to get this channel going and of course a slap of that like button will definitely help now, if we continue going down this market, we can see that some altcoins are in a pretty good retracement. Now, I'm not saying that it's an absolute fire sale. I'm not going to exaggerate this dip, uh, but it is a, a slight breather, a pullback. Okay. Now, if you haven't um, already scaled in around this zone, this is not a bad time to dollar cost average. Okay. Because we are in a little bit of a pullback in the last little while. We can see in the last 24 hours, a lot of these coins are down approximately uh, two to 5% or so. So it's not a huge dip. You know, it's not a really big, big blow to our portfolios. However, maybe it's something to kind of consider maybe scaling in if you already haven't around this critical area that we are around the 17 to uh, maybe $16,000 level. If you haven't really got into uh, the market in within that range, it's a good level to start DCAing just a little bit of your portfolio or your capital if you have any on the sidelines, okay? So just think about that. Obviously, this is not financial advice. However, guys, I do share a lot of what I'm doing with my portfolio on a daily basis. And, you know, it works for me. What works for me may work for you or may not. Guys, feel free to share what works for you in the comment section below. In addition, guys, follow me on Twitter because I do give you updates throughout the day regarding my thoughts, news, and TA. So follow me on Twitter, guys. It's a great place to get up to date with what's happening around the crypto space. Chainlink is coming down, unfortunately. And the scenario is that it did get a nice big upgrade recently regarding staking Chainlink, which should be really good regarding the ecosystem or the tokenomics now we do have a little bit of chain link now staked up getting about approximately four and a half percent reward for staking meaning that there will be less volume uh, of tokens willing to kind of be traded right now which is good 
the circulating supply is being dampered or withheld from the volume of the market, which is good. At the end of the day, it's good. We're, we're staking up. We're holding our coins. We're going to see less volatility, less people selling and buying and so on and so forth. And that should drive uh, the price up eventually slow and steadily. So that's a really good thing about staking is that you can you can guarantee that some people will appreciate that four and a half percent and not sell their coins just to uh reap those benefits right so chain link really good project at the end of the day something that is very very necessary for um the ethereum ecosystem as an oracle it's a must have and i suggest that everybody hold a small bag of uh, chain link depending on how bullish you are guys if you're super bullish do what you see fit but i personally am holding a small bag of chain link i feel like it's a good play for a long-term hold um many coins are pulling back however some of them are not even budging right we do we see monero going sideways flat pretty good why we see the market coming down we see uh, monero going flat as a privacy coin that's a good um thing to see especially that privacy coins are frowned upon uh, especially regarding um, being listed on exchanges. Many exchanges don't want to deal with privacy coins that, you know, so you can understand why regulators have their eyes on these privacy coins and, uh, and exchanges don't want that heat. So you can understand that. Going down, we see XLM, of course, coming down. Uh, Algorand undervalued, severely undervalued, down quite a bit in the last seven days, approximately 8%. Guys, I I don't know what's going on with Algorand. I just think that maybe got uh, a little bit overvalued with the, uh, uh, the World Cup pump or leading up to the World Cup. It got pumped pretty good, and now it's kind of get, reaching equilibrium or finding its uh, true value and sometimes while it's trying to find its true value it becomes oversold and, and undervalued and that's the fluctuations that we get we see the rsi deeply oversold and then we get a pump to the upside that sometimes that pump takes it to overbought and we get overbought oversold overbought oversold and it could be that algorand right now is oversold and we could be getting a little bit of a pump to the upside in the immediate short term but of course a lot of this ta relies on bitcoin right now we see bitcoin taking that breather and we're seeing the altcoins are taking a big a, a, a big a bigger breather and that's why we see the altcoin dominance or the bitcoin dominance outperforming altcoins right now we can kind of take a look at that very shortly quant pulling back at about a uh, 117 dollars not bad obviously if you look at the average up approximately three percent down approximately three percent it, it really hasn't changed in the last little while so if it hovers uh, in and around $100 or so, your dollar cost average is pretty decent. If we fall below, severely below, guys, I would be scooping quant up personally, personally. Let me know if you want me to make a, a video on quant. In fact, if there are any coins that you want me to cover on the channel, let me know in the comment section below, guys, because I'll be glad to outline a plan and a strategy going forward. Guys, that's how we do it on the channel. We look for opportunities. We don't care if it's bearish or bullish. We need to have that plan and, and capitalizing on any volatility is the key. And, you know, obviously, uh, and preserving capital. Guys, lately, I've been seeing a lot of people getting wrecked because when we get sideways action, leverage gets really dangerous. You get wicked out, stopped out, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, FOMO or, or even emotions get involved. You get bored and you start getting sloppy with your trading techniques. So definitely pay attention to preserving that capital and risk management. Filecoin coming down. I like Filecoin and Arweave. Those two um, decentralized storage solutions for Web3 are key to the Web3 development that is going to be happening in the near future. I would definitely consider those two heavyweights in that department, in that category, or in that narrative. Near Protocol pulling back. I like Near Protocol regardless of all the, the uh, FTX heat that has been getting sold uh, and near are two of the coins that I think are severely, severely undervalued based on the FTX scenario. And I believe a nice small bag of each of those coins in preparation of uh, a little bit of a, a relief rally or uh, um, an equilibrium pump, let's call it, getting back to true value will eventually uh, do well. So it depends on your risk tolerance, guys. Obviously, I'm on the younger side, so I will like a little bit of risk in my portfolio. I don't mind taking a little bit of risk. Um, so for me, I got time on my hands, right? I got time in my favor to kind of play the market. So near protocol is a little riskier given all the FUD, but I think it's just still FUD. Uh, the ecosystem is still brilliant, still really good, um, ecosystem. 
Hedera Hashgraph pulling back, a good project that is spoken about throughout social media is very, very frequently and highly, highly spoken about. So I would definitely get a small bag of those, especially on a pullback. And we can see that right now and, and no sign of bullish divergence at these bottom of the ranges. These pullbacks are fresh. So you may want to see a consolidation period, some inverse head and shoulders or W formations on all these charts before you can confidently say that maybe we reached a little bit of a support. Right now, there's no indicator there. Uh, we talked about internet computers uh, that it, we to expect a pullback and a good opportunity to scale in. So far, it hit our first buy opportunity. So we're still DCing in that. Uh, in that buy range. So make sure you check out that uh, uh, video that I released um, a couple of days ago. It definitely outlines my plan and my strategy regarding internet computers. It has a lot of venture capitalists looking at it right now and many, many bullish uh, or bullish sentiment throughout the market right now is um, looking really promising regarding internet computer. I think it's going to look, it's going to make a little bit of recovery regardless of its history. Um, it's due for a little bit of a recovery when you see a lot of bullish sentiment. Um, the coin for today, Alron Multiverse X, it has been rebranded and upgraded um, to uh, Multiverse X. I don't know if I really appreciate that name. I kind of like Elrond, or it could be that I just got used to it. But after our little rally to the upside, now it's getting a little bit of a pullback, making this scenario almost like a retest or a back test of the breakout. Okay, so this is a good time to perhaps get into a little bit of a position at $44. It's not bad. This The, the, the value is definitely there. Okay, so Trust Wallet, obviously getting a, a little pump to the upside. We talked about that pullback. We pretty much hit the target. We got exhausted with that pullback, and now we're retesting previous highs. Could we be breaking out of those tops? Very possible, guys. The trend is your friend, and if Bitcoin continues looking positive and, and gets uh, after this little relief to the downside, we get a pump to continue to the upside. You can imagine Trust Wallet doing very, very well. Okay, um, but before we're going to get into Elrond very, very soon. Um, and what else can we see here? Axie Infinity rolling over, in my opinion. It's due for a rollover. Sandbox pulling back. These um, coins regarding um, Metaverse took a beating, but I think they're going to make a comeback, guys. It, it, they're on the riskier side of the spectrum regarding asset allocation. And usually riskier coins have greater gains but they also have greater losses. So it could be that we definitely get that comeback eventually. So start DCing at the bottom of the range so that you can appreciate um, a, a nice pump when we do get a little bit of a recovery. Even halfway up to previous highs, you can definitely get your portfolio or your, your stash back to a good level. Aptos, we talked about Aptos yesterday and that we should be scaling in. And guys, we're pulling back at good levels Perhaps it's time to look at the bottom of the range and start buying the dip. Okay, we are we are rolling over here. You can see that the chart did roll over, and this could be the opportunity. Pancake swap, great ecosystem for those small cap gems and uh, shit coins that a lot of people call them. At the end of the day, these coins pump and they dump. However, there's volume that goes through these coins. And when the bull market begins again, I don't know if PancakeSwap will lead that market again the way it did last time, but I definitely don't want to wait and find out. I definitely want to make sure that I'm in it because if it does happen, you know how many gains, how much gains you can make off of PancakeSwap. It traded, I topped up at about 50 bucks. Right now it's under $4, guys. It's looking good. And, you know, as a, the major... Uh, uh, decentralized exchange uh, that handles Binance Smart Chain uh, um, network, guys. It's 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 a pretty good. It's a pretty good scenario. We know that Binance Smart Chain and the whole Binance ecosystem is doing very well. Uh, what else we see? Phantom pulling back. I love Phantom. I'm going to be scaling in and creating a position here at the bottom of the range. Um, I do kind of share about uh, a lot about what I do regarding the coins that I like, and Elrond is definitely one of them. And I feel like Elrond needs our attention. So. Just quickly, look at the new website. They rebranded to Multiverse X. You know, it looks a little sci-fi, a little interesting, and a little bit underdeveloped, uh, obviously coming soon, so on and so forth. Good project overall. Nice website. 
I, I want to see what it has to offer in the upcoming days. Let's get right into the charts, guys. I know you're here to see what I have to say about the price action, the charts, the TA is what I do. And of course, guys, if you appreciate this content, if you appreciate my analysis, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel, click the bell button. In addition, if at any time I offer you any alpha or any value, do yourself a favor and do the channel a favor. Slap that like button, guys, because you know as a new channel, the support is greatly appreciated. Also, guys, follow me on Twitter because I give you a lot of what I'm thinking on twitter throughout the day so let's get right into these charts we can see that with the pullback is definitely real and we can also see that the support level is definitely real as well look at that nice support right here looking left we have this little jitter of price action that is acting as support not once but twice and we put in this orange line because we wanted to pay attention to this, that if we came back to this level, that we would DCA. And that was the plan. And you know what? I am going to stick by the plan because at $60, I bet you many people were thinking, oh, I missed out. We're going to co continue rallying. Elrond is bullish. We're going to go. This is a double bottom. We're going. And guess what? We're still in a double bottom. We just created a lower low. Now the question is, is there bullish divergence? Let's check this out. This low this low and we're on the daily we're on a bigger time a slightly bigger time frame here so no big deal and we see that the price action okay is looking good at the end of the day it's not a divergence maybe it's a convergence where you know we could have pivoted here a true divergence would be when you see the price action coming down lower uh, and the rsi is pivoting to the upside what is the macd we could have a bullish divergence on the macd let's check that out in fact no in fact, no. In fact, it's not looking the greatest. Eh, I don't see it. Okay, guys. So it looks like maybe there's a little bit more sideways action in store for Elrond on the higher time frames. No real confirmation, personally. I don't feel that confident. However, if we look, just consider this area right here let's get into lower time frames that is the four hour time frame that we're on right now we can see that this looks like a great uh inverse head and shoulders scenario right and eventually as we continue rounding off here um creating this big head and shoulders formation we can definitely create some sort of cup and maybe a handle once we get rejected maybe at a, a golden pocket 618 retracement to the upside which is very possible the only thing that is causing me to believe that we may come down is the fact that we're we're getting a strong rejection on the 200 ema this is obviously on the four hour chart and the fact that the rsi got reset Okay, so we got all the way high to overbought. Now we're coming back down and hopefully, uh, maybe we come right back up and try to blast through this 200 EMA. Guys, my opinion is at this moment is um, it looks range bound. It doesn't look like we're getting strength, no volume. Look at that, guys. Even the little volume that we did get, we got rejected quickly off that 200 EMA. So I'm not really convinced. I see a lot of confluence re regarding the RSI, meaning the RSI is going up. Let's kind of paint this picture. RSI is going up. And the price action is pretty much going in the same direction despite this wick or this dip right here. It's going up. We can see that. The slight bias is to the upside, especially after this pivot point. So... Could it be that we got that reset and we're coming down to lower levels, perhaps down to the bottom of the range, and eventually get that true bullish divergence that we're looking for right here? We got some bullish divergence here. Yes, we did. But that already played out. Price action coming down while the RSI is going up. And then we continue to the upside on this bullish convergence to the upside. But it looks like it got reset, guys. That's my opinion. Uh, it could be that we get a little bit of a pump to the upside for some liquidity. Uh, because many people probably did go short here. And sometimes the market tries to hunt for liquidity back to previous uh, major levels of buying and selling which would be right here based on the supply and demand you can see the cluster of supply and demand right here at 46 dollars there's a lot of people that went in into this price action so to hunt liquidity this would be a great place let's get a trend line in here uh horizontal uh resistance perhaps that we can kind of keep an eye on now we need to break above okay and if we don't uh guys we can pendant out here or we can even break down and that's not going to look the greatest right let's look at how this could look like a cup and handle right we need to stay above the 50 
uh, Fibonacci. So we could definitely come down a little bit, create some sort of handle around the zone, and then pump to the upside and break above. If we break above, it's going to look really good, but I'm still not convinced. And at the end of the day as well, we got to understand that when the RSI gets to oversold, sometimes it could stay there for a while. So it just visited it really quickly and pumped downside. I like to get some confirmations. Right now, we didn't get any confirmations of a reversal. So I'm anticipating either consolidation and um, or a at least a pump to the upside with a clear reset of this RSI with some bearish divergence at the top. So a higher high with a lower high on the RSI sloping downwards would tell me that we got exhausted, that the bulls got exhausted and we're ready to come down. So something that looks like this. <clears throat> that, that would allow us to grab that liquidity at these levels and then slowly uh, and then quickly dump to the downside, creating that bearish divergence and then have the RSI revisit the bottom of the range once again and perhaps again reaccumulate around these zones. Uh, you know, reaccumulation, we could be in a fat accumulation period in crypto in general, in general. So maybe something like this rejection, come back down, maybe back up, maybe get some liquidity, come back down, stay above the 50. Fibonacci is very possible, get this handle, come back up, and then maybe break up to the upside. That's very possible, something like that. And if not, guys, it's very possible that we do come down to these lower levels. So what would I do trade-wise? I know this is all hypothetical. Trade-wise, if I were to get into any position, I would be comfortable at a, at a position where I would have a good risk-to-reward ratio. And that would be back at the bottom of the range. And especially looking at the $41 level as a key area of a golden pocket retracement level, that would be a key area of starting my buying right around here. Okay. That's where I would start my start my buying, and I would start to go long, considering long, right around here, setting a tight stop loss right below the bottom of the range. That's a three percent stop loss with the potential to take profits again right here at the cup and handle breakout point, and then take more profits. Okay, if we do break higher again at the point of control here at about fifty. So you can see that there's a huge cluster supply and demand that will act as resistance in previous price action starts to get really heavy here around the zone. So if we can break above the $45 mark, I would definitely take some more profits. And you can see, look at that huge cluster supply and demand begins here. So this is very risky. In fact, yeah, the 45 yeah, $45 is where I would take profits. And if we get a strong bounce, yeah, maybe we can break above all this. This, Yeah, that's what we got to look. If we break above, I'm I'm considering getting to about uh, $50 or so. That's what I would look, take profits here. That would be my next pr take profit scenario. So let's kind of get this going. Let's kind of zoom here. Get that here, duplicate this for one setup, get this down about here, point of control value area, low value area high, point of control here. Yeah, this is good. Start to accumulate right around this zone in and between 41, $42 and $40 or so, tight stop loss below just in case. And that would be a good long. Now, where we are right now, it could be that we consolidate right around the zone. The RSI looks like it's starting to become exhausted. If we go a little higher, guys, look, we're really close to this invalidation or take profit. So the risk of getting in right now, in my opinion, and risking to make 7%, okay, set up a really tight stop loss, but where? It's not clear. The invalidation is not clear. Look at all these wicks in this price action. This is why it's the risk is not it's not good risk to reward ratio wise, right? If we went long right here where we are, ugh, like where would you put the, the stop loss? You know what I mean? Like guys, it's not good. I'm not even gonna attend that. Now going short, if you were to go short, it's it's a little better because you can put a stop loss right above here, this line at forty five dollars. But still, we're like, you know, if you, let's see, let's see, let's see ratio wise getting in right here. So the stop loss here. Look at that. Is it really worth it? And that we come back here. Yeah, it's a two to two and a half, two point three to one ratio 
risking 4% to make 10%. It's not bad, but guys, a better scenario would be to go in a spot position right now is totally fine. Whether it goes up or goes down, your position will be hold and held and you can dollar cost average when we come down to bring your average position down. However, you're gonna get into any leverage positions, guys. Wait until you get into a good risk to reward ratio opportunity. And I say that around this zone would be good. And if you can get your average anywhere within this area of this box and on both these setups, guys, the risk to reward ratio is very healthy. Okay, guys, uh, looking good. Now, if we get into lower time frames, can we see something interesting? Nothing really, guys. It's really volatile. A lot of time frames on the one hour, the daily we talked about. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the bell button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Guys, in addition, if you have any coins that you want me to cover on the channel, let me know in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter, guys. I'm on there on a daily basis telling you what I think regarding news and price action. And, of course, slap that like button, guys. If I gave you any value, just slap it because any support is greatly appreciated. Take care, guys. Have a good one. And don't forget, buy the dip.